Okay, so now to finish it off, I want to pay attention to kind of the overall effect. And if there's anything I want to do in the refined color, I want to make sure it has a big impact. So maybe changing the shape of this eye a little bit to reflect the position of the eye on the other side. Just that's a little bit more up in the corner here than I have it. Just little things, final touches, final highlights like you would add into any painting. Very light touch. Darkening some darks where you think it's necessary. Again, up in those corners. Maybe a little bit between the lips here. So I'm looking, looking at the hole, trying to make those determinations. So not reacting so much to what I do, but knowing exactly now what I need to, to fix going in. And then the, the area that I've ignored the most are these man-made glasses at the top. And giving them just, just enough. To make sense with a little bit of color variation in there. So we know what we're looking at. Rendering anything basically just comes down to value choices. And to make the glass look reflective, I need to have lights next to darks and pretty sharp edges. And so drawing with light color can be just as helpful as edging in with a dark. Especially on the bottom edge of these lenses. But I certainly don't want the glasses on her head to be the focal point of my composition. So. So you choose how much attention you really need to pay. Now something that is going to help is cleaning up the outside. So once I feel I've got it where I want it, then I am ready to clean it up and make some final artistic decisions that finishes it and then we'll get into kind of all the special effects that are open to you as a digital artist which are kind of the equivalent of framing it putting a mat on it doing those things but playing with the the overall adjustments at the end so what I'm looking for now and this is hard to do in one painting you know, it's just an exercise like this. But I'm trying to assess it for overall finish. Does every, every aspect of it look as considered as every other? Or is there something that's really going to draw attention that I'm going to notice later and be unhappy with? And right now, the main thing that doesn't feel finished is the edge. You know, much more than little bits of white that are showing or anything else this edge doesn't feel refined. So I'm going to cut away from that. And the way I prefer to do that is not to actually edit my sketch layer, but instead to kind of flatten everything into one layer on top and then edit it from there. Make sure I have enough color variation here that it's interesting.
and that this tone makes sense. Is it too dark? So all this takes a lot of time and preparation, but now, now that I've gotten here, I'm going to save it. And I could play with unlocking my sketch layer and playing with different opacities of it because that sketch layer is only kind of filling in some little parts that I thought were useful. But I, I do like it kind of heavy. So what I'm going to do, I'll leave that locked. I don't think I want that mixer brush at all, so I'm going to take that experiment off. And now, being on the top layer, turning off the white background, I'm going to hold down Option and say Layer Merge Visible. And with Option uh, held down, it's going to combine all of these onto one layer. Turn on the white background, lock the refined color layer, save it again. So now this is all merged. And now that allows me to change tools for the first time in a long time to the eraser at 100% opacity, even though it's a brush eraser, because I don't want it to look too mechanical. And I can clean up this outside edge a little bit, her hairline, the glasses. And I can vary the brush. I can even vary the opacity of the brush if I want. So let me use the same brush I've been using. But now for erasing. And let me check, check the settings and turn on those shape dynamics. It's the first time I've used it with the eraser. Let's see. Even turn on the scattering, but... There we go. So now when I erase from my edge at full opacity like I am right now, it feels like I'm using the same brush to get those shapes at the edge. So the other tool you can use is you can take the opacity down of your eraser and thus leave a little bit of a softer border. And that's especially helpful on things like the hair, where we might see through it a bit. But other times you just want to take it down pretty, pretty cleanly and pretty severely. So I don't like how that's rotating. Let me check my brush preset again. Oh, I want to control the anger general with the pin tilt. There we go. And this will make more sense. And I'm not painting with white here. Instead, I'm erasing. So even if I have a gray background, which can be a helpful thing to put in, kind of see how your painting holds up on a different surface. Whoops. <laughs> you can erase away. But I like a little bit of that brown underneath. It's like the red clay underneath the glaze coming through. Now this is all one combined layer at the top that I'm erasing from. So if I accidentally get rid of something that I like, I can get it back. I have those layers here. I can also play with kind of which are emphasized and why. So this gives you a lot of options. If there's just big things you want to get rid of, like my palette over here, just circle and delete. Otherwise, this is quite helpful. All right, so now I can add anything I think I need. 
go back to my brush. Maybe I need a little bit more subtlety of color at the edges here. Show the light kind of coming around. I need a little bit more shadow in the ear here. Though I suspect that's largely because in the photo it's kind of covered by this hair. Maybe I need some more strings of hair to soften here. And flying off the back as well. Again, like that graffiti technique, you can put them in and then erase them. A few off to here. Kind of frame the face a little. Go a little bit darker on this back edge. Underneath the glasses. Soften the hairline in some places. Heighten the shadows and others. Even punch up some highlights. All right, so now, now that we've kind of cleaned it, I can use the eraser again, maybe at a very low opacity, and knock some of those new changes back. On gray, they look like one thing. I might want to check them on white. See how those look. Make sure they have the color variation I want. somehow got on the pencil tool. That's why it wasn't working the way I wanted. It's all about having predictable tools. You're getting a sense of how this all comes together. switch to the eraser if I actually want to remove so I have a clear blank background. Cutting away, putting back in over and over again. And you get to decide when it's enough. All right, so how do we finish it off? If I feel that's finished, then I can sign it. I'll usually do that on a different layer, just in case I really mess up the signature. You want to find a brush that feels natural. Color variations. This is one cool thing I'll show you. Just for my signature, I might use this. I'll pick a color, and then I'll pick a background color, and then I'll use the brush presets and turn on color dynamics where I can have it jitter between the fore foreground and background. So what does that look like? Like that, where it actually mixes the color as you use the brush. I want to use it at full opacity. Now let's just make it a little bit smaller. Yep, and now I can paint in my signature. <laughs>